Hi everyone, I'm Pallavi. I'm a lifestyle and corporate influencer. And today I have the privilege to have Dr. Nitin Murthy with me, who is the consultant, medical oncologist, and hemato oncologist at Manipal Hospital, Sarjapur Road. Thank you, Doctor, for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And today, the most important topic is uh, on breast cancer because we know that October month is the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And since we know that breast cancer is one of the most common cancers found in India, why is it so important to discuss about breast cancer and why is it so important to raise awareness? One of the most important um, sort of uh, lifestyle disease also which I can label and something which is increasing in tremendous proportion is cancer. Hmm. If we just look at numbers, Breast cancer, every year in India, close to 2 lakh new cases are being diagnosed. The most important point as to why we need to really talk about awareness is that less than one third of patients are diagnosed in an early stage. Mm. Almost two thirds are diagnosed when it has already spread to the lymph nodes or in advanced stages. So when we talk about breast cancer, so how will you broadly um, inform us about what it means? All of us, normal cells grow divide and then die. Mm. Cancer cells are immortal. They don't die. Because there is a change in the program of the cell, what I like to call just like our computer has a software code, mm. our cell's software code is DNA. When there are errors in DNA, we call them mutation. Mm. So the signal to the cell goes haywire. They keep continuing to divide, divide, divide and don't die and that ultimately forms a tumour mm. or what we call as cancer. Mm. And it starts off from one organ and then spreads to other organs in the body which is called as metastasis. Okay, so cancer, even breast cancer can move from one part of yes, the body to another? Yes, absolutely, absolutely okay. and that is why we keep talking about early diagnosis because mm. with early diagnosis, you talk about very high chances of cure. As the cancer cells keep dividing and growing and there is no treatment which has happened, mm. it starts spreading to other parts of the body and when it spreads to other parts of the body, we call it as stage 4 cancer. So a breast cancer can spread to bones, it oh. can spread to liver, lungs most commonly and sometimes it can even spread to the brain. Okay, so doctor when we talk about breast cancer, what is the earliest age group that you have noticed or you're aware of that they had breast cancer? So. The youngest patient I have treated with breast cancer is someone who was 25, 26 year old. So it okay. can come at a younger age. Common age group of presentation of breast cancer in the Indian setting is between 50 to 60 years of age group, mm. which again is a decade earlier than mm. what is seen in the Western population. Okay, so when you are mentioning that in um, outside India, it's generally later stage. What is the primary factor that Indian women are getting it much? As countries become more economically progressed, there is globalization and there is industrialization that is happening, mm. you start seeing an increase in breast cancer. And that comes down to showing how breast cancer is also a lifestyle related disease mm. uh, in terms of the food that is consumed, uh, possible more sedentary lifestyle, alcohol and there are alcohol, smoking, smoking. Uh, and various other factors including uh, the age at which a woman gets pregnant, uh, breastfeeding. Oh wow, so if it is a delayed pregnancy then it will be, how does it um, imply that it will increase the factor? There are primarily three different types of breast cancer. We say they can be estrogen and progesterone receptor positive breast cancer, HER2 new which is a um, special protein secreted by the cancer cells and when all these three are negative, we call it as triple negative breast cancer. Now the most common type of breast cancer are ERPR positive, which is estrogen and progesterone related, which clearly implies that there is a risk for prolonged exposure to estrogen and progesterone in a woman's body, the risk of breast cancer goes up. Mm. Um, which is why pregnancy and breastfeeding because mm. of the impact and the way it modulates the hormones mm. reduces the risk of breast cancer. Now, of course, one needs to understand that that is not the only risk. There are various other factors which play a role, mm. but these are some of the risk factors. Mm. And what are the main symptoms that patients come to you with? Right, so that's very, very important. And the most common symptom is finding a lump. Breast cancer lumps start off being painless. If it's a painful okay. lump that we notice right from the beginning, it actually may not be cancer. 
because it's only when the lump increases in size and it begins invading the nerves or the skin does the pain happen mm. but when it starts off it's typically a painless breast lump which is there mm. the other thing is any abnormal nipple discharge noticing a lump under the armpit uh, noticing an ulcer on the breast which is not healing uh, skin changes mm. uh, changes in the nipple these are some things that we tell women that do notice during your self examination if you notice any of these please bring it to your doctor's attention right so what is the correlation between the armpit and uh, right yes breast cancer so, so in our body there's something called as lymph nodes hmm. all right and we have lymph nodes in the neck hmm. uh, axilla chest abdomen groin region right. lymph nodes are basically a sort of a drainage mechanism in our body from the blood hmm. the first area that cancer spreads to is the lymph nodes and the axilla or the armpit hmm. is the drainage area for the breast hence the, i don't know whether it's a myth that if you apply antiperspirant then your chances of getting breast cancer increases. yeah so 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 it is a myth so we are, i do get asked quite a bit of questions that do wearing tight inner clothing do using antiperspirants increases right. the risk of breast cancer at this point of time we have absolutely no scientific evidence to substantiate these claims so when we talk about self examination or screening what are the different ways of screening and how often should a woman and at what age should they go and start gold standard screening test is what is called as mammogram hmm. which is nothing but an x ray of the breast okay who should do it and when should they do it being a woman itself is a risk factor for breast cancer hmm. so per se all women are classified as being at average risk for breast cancer hmm. and we different guidelines have different age cut offs to start screening mm. but generally we say about the age of 40 45 years start doing a mammogram um yearly once and sometime later you can move to two yearly ones if someone has a family history of breast cancer mm. or someone has the BRCA mutation which Angelina Jolie made very famous uh they are at a higher risk of breast cancer and they are called as being at high risk for breast cancer what my next question was mri ultrasound and mammogram how do you differentiate them and what are their purposes yeah so mammogram is the standard screening test sometimes um based on the breast density the sensitivity or how well a mammogram is able to give a report starts coming down okay which is why then you make use of an ultrasound to characterize the lesion better or to give a better report okay MRI is the next level of testing which you use it in high risk women as screening or despite a mammogram and an ultrasound being done if you're not able to get enough information you do an MRI of the breast which is a very very superior technique hmm. but takes a lot more time to do and you need the capabilities and the expertise to interpret an MRI of the breast which fortunately here at Manipal hospital we have dedicated breast radiologists also who give their opinion yeah. you also talked about self breast examination right. um in a scientific way the exact utility of self breast examination is debatable hmm. with different studies showing different outcomes hmm. women in the reproductive age group or in the premenopausal age group hmm. we say to do self breast examination one week after their menstrual cycles okay. so that the breasts are not tender post menopausal women we say fix one day of a month and do the self breast examination on that day. so doctor as we discussed that one of the major reason of breast cancer could be hormonal disbalance so my next question is for the women who are under birth control pills are they more susceptible to this breast cancer women who take hormone replacement therapy in the post menopausal period hmm. to control their menopausal symptoms are definitely at a higher risk of developing breast cancer hmm. uh, there is again because of increased exposure to these external hormone agents right but when using birth pills the data is conflicting and not really conclusive hmm. there definitely appears to be some increased risk of breast cancer but studies have found that it is transient that within 2 to 5 years of discontinuation the hmm. risk comes down and okay. that is primarily because the amount of hormones in ocps as compared to hormone replacement therapy is different as such right for survivorship of the patients how do you support the patients who are currently undergoing the treatment survivorship is a very very um, important aspect mm. and uh, do um, engage the services of um, um, 
onco psychologist okay. to help the patient and the family in their support uh, we do tend to give them resources they can um, um, read up mm. we do tell them what to do and more importantly physical activity mm. uh, okay. so we encourage patients to have lead a good healthy active lifestyle have mm. good balanced nutritious diet these are the components of survivorship um four groups play a huge role because it's not something which the doctor is saying it's not something which the family members are saying hmm. it's something another patient who has gone through hmm. is telling and it is relatable to them absolutely it's relatable even for the families right even for the families and provide them a lot of support and confidence hmm. which ensures that they are compliant to treatment and hmm. compliance to treatment again leads to better chances of cure what are the common myths that you have heard from patients because of which you right. might get the most common myth hmm. is that cancer is not curable okay that is the biggest myth that we have to shatter hmm. i always tell my patients you can't cure diabetes and hypertension hmm. but you can cure cancer when it's detected in early stage hmm. and the chance of cure when detected in early stage breast cancer is more than 80% and that is because today we are doing a lot of state of the art treatment with cancer at manipal hospital mm. with immunotherapy mm. targeted therapy mm. some of the advanced surgeries with what is called a sentinel lymph node dissection mm. uh, breast conservation surgeries and a lot more which is enabling us to get better and better outcomes the next question basically that technological advancement in our country or even throughout the world for any kind of uh, medical uh, association associated things so how is it helpful in uh, breast cancer like these days we have some advanced targeted therapies where we combine with chemotherapy give it shrink the disease and in 60% of patients even mm. before surgery the cancer completely disappears okay and then only the lump is removed hmm. they are then given some of the advanced radiation therapy where it is very very targeted to the area where it's to be given hmm. and then the targeted therapy is continued you won't believe that we have now reached a stage where in certain breast cancers which are stage 4 we don't use chemotherapy okay we just use oral tablets hmm. so you can just use targeted oral tablets which are called as cell cycle inhibitors which mm. block the cancer cells from dividing and growing mm. combined with hormonal therapy radiation oncology with tomosynthesis has really made huge impacts and reduced the side effects and the targeted radiation that can be given so these technological advancements or advancements in treatment has definitely made a huge impact mm. and improved survival got it. like i again said someone diagnosed in stage 2 stage 3 the chances of cure mm. are more than 75 to 80%. The next question is uh, so for plastic surgery being very prevalent at this generation do you think the silicon breast implant has anything to do with increasing the chance of having breast cancer? So we don't have evidence. definite scientific evidence that silicon implants can increase the most common type of breast cancer mm. but there are some reports of it being associated with different kinds of uh, cancer hmm. occurring and so for the crux of the entire things that we discussed what are the main highlights that you want to point out to the audience to younger people younger women as well as for the women who need to probably post uh, menopausal the audience who are basically viewing what do you want to say one of the most important risk factors which the world health organization has classified as being a possible cancer causing agent nighttime shift work okay right sleep mm. good sleep is underrated and under recognized mm. nighttime shift work which by extrapolation means improper sleep in the night mm. is classified as a class 2a carcinogen by the who okay. and this is based on studies large studies which have been done in uk and all mm. so my one advice is always have good sleep mm. after the age of 40 mm. anyone in the family get a mammogram done mm. and for the awareness should hospitals also keep some camps or in manipal are you doing some camps oh uh, absolutely we um, do engage with a lot of um, corporates to with a lot of institutes educational mm. institutes uh, to conduct awareness talks um, mm. uh, we do conduct regular camps uh, screening camps on a basis um, knowledge and the mindset has to percolate to the entire country that right. people realize you know no one ever thinks twice before checking sugar hmm. or bp levels hmm. right 
Why not the same thing with cancer? Mm. It is because of the stigma associated with it. And I hope that this conversation goes a long way in breaking those stigmas and spreading the knowledge and awareness that cancer is curable. Mm. Cancer can be detected early. Mm. And more importantly, there can be steps taken to reduce the risk of developing cancer. Thank you so much, Doctor. You shared so much light on most of the myths and the uh, stigmas that people have, like you rightly mentioned. It was of great help to all of us. It's a pleasure being there. And thank you so much uh, for being involved in this uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, opportunity to spread awareness about breast cancer. Thank you so much. And I think like as rightly as you mentioned, it's not just October month. Yeah. It is a topic to be discussed like throughout the year. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.